Hey gang, in this video I'm going to cover subtracting mixed fractions or mixed numbers. I'm going to do a few examples because of all the things you do with fractions, this is one of the more tricky ones. So um, I'm going to look at a few different examples, one, two, three, four, five, six different examples, but they all kind of show something different. Some are a little easier than others. So in subtracting mixed fractions, it's when you have a mixed number and you're subtracting another mixed number, or in some cases you have a whole number and you're subtracting a mixed number whole number subtracting a mixed number or a mixed number and you're subtracting a whole number. So we're going to look at sorts of different types of examples and what happens. Now before I show you how to do this, but since we're subtracting, you need to keep um, something in mind. I'm going to show you something very, very basic. There's really two types of subtraction problems when you, when you get down to just the basics. There are simple ones, for example, let's say 28 minus um, 12, let's say. Now, the reason this is easy is because you just do 8 minus 2, and that's 6, and then you do 2 minus 1, and that's 1. And you get 16. So it's pretty straightforward. You just subtract and subtract, and, and you're good. The other types are, let's say you have 51, and you have to take away 24. Uh, the reason this is tougher is because when you go 1 minus 4, you can't take away 4 from 1. So you have to go to the next column and borrow, and you make the 5 into a 4, and then you give 1 to the next column. Because the 5 actually represents 50 in 51, and so when you borrow, you're borrowing 10 to the 1, and the 1 becomes 11, because you gave 10 to it. And then you have enough to subtract. 11 minus 4 is um, 7, and then 4 minus 2 is 2. So there's two real types of subtraction problems. There's subtraction problems where you need to borrow, and there's subtraction problems um, like this one, you have to borrow problems where you don't have to borrow. And the same thing happens with mixed numbers. There's problems where you have to borrow, and then there's problems where you don't have to borrow. Now, some people will tell you that you should just turn these all into improper fractions, but you'll find that in most cases, at least with positive numbers, that's, that won't be the case. And um, you can just do what I'm going to show you here. So here in my first example, I have 5 and 7 eighths minus 2 and 1 sixth. And just like any adding or subtracting fractions problem, you're going to want to look at your denominators first to see if they're common. These aren't common, so I'll make them common. So I'm going to rewrite the 5, and I'm going to make common denominators. I'm not sure yet. And the minus 2, and I'm going to make, I'm just setting it up here. I'm going to, this is where I'm going to put my fractions. So 8 and 6, I'm going to go through the multiples of 8, 8, no. 16, no, 24, yes. 24 will work for both. So I'm going to make these into 24. So you can kind of see how I got this set up here. Um, so I have 5 and something 24 minus 2 and something 24. Now, 8 times 3 is 24. So I'm going to do my numerator times 3. 7 times 3 is 21. So there's my equivalent fraction. And then 6 times 4 is 24. So I'm going to do... 1 times 4, which is 4. Now, you'll notice that this is going to be the first type of problem where I don't have to borrow. It's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to look, and I'm first going to look at my numerators now that they're common. 21 minus 4, can I do that? And the answer is yes, I can do 21 minus 4. So I'm going to do 21 minus 4 for my numerator, and that's going to be uh, minus 4 is 17. And then I'll keep my denominator the same. So I just subtracted my fractions. 21 24 minus 4 24 is 17 24. Then I'm going to subtract my whole numbers. 5 minus 2 is 3. And 17 24 is in simplest form, so I don't have to do anything else. I just subtract it. Pretty straightforward. Make common denominators, subtract the numerators, subtract the whole numbers. Now that's, like I said, the first type of subtraction problem where you don't borrow. Let me show, what hap show you what happens when you have to borrow, okay? In this next example, I've made it somewhat easier for you because I've made common denominators already. And that should be the first thing you look for. Look at their denominators. Are they the same? This one is, so I'm ready to go. I'm going to try to subtract the numerators. 1 minus 3. I can't take away 3 from 1 without going into negative, so... This is an example where you have to borrow. I don't, there's only one-fourth over here, and I'm supposed to take away three-fourths, and I can't do that. So I'm going to borrow from this th 13. Here's how it works. Just like with borrowing, I'm going to cross it off and make it into a 12. Now, I took one away from that 13, and you're going to give it to the one-fourth. 
So I took it from the 13 and then I'm going to make it 1 and 1 fourth. So I have 12 and then I have 1 and 1 fourth. Now this is kind of two, I've broken this into two parts, but I'm going to reassemble it now. So I'm going to rewrite 12 instead of 13 underneath because that's what I made this number. And now this fraction, I'm actually going to change this into an improper fraction. So 4 times 1 is 4, and then plus 1 is 5. So 1 and 1 fourth is actually 5 fourths. And I want to write it as an improper fraction. And you'll see why in a second. So I borrowed, I crossed that off, made that 12, gave 1 or 4 fourths to this, and now it's 5 fourths. And then I'll just recopy this second fraction, minus 6 and 3 fourths was what it was. And now if you look at my numerators, now I can subtract. So 5 minus 3, I can take that away, and that's 2 fourths. And then 12 minus 6, I'll subtract my whole numbers, is 6. Now, 2 fourths is not reduced. That can be reduced, divide by 2, divide by 2, and that's 1 half. So this is 6 and a half. So that's an example of borrowing. You're borrowing from the whole number. You're giving one to the fraction and then making it an improper fraction. Okay, so that's how you borrow. Let's look at another example like that. So here I have um, fifteenths and twelfths. I'm going to make common denominators because the denominators aren't the same. Fifteenths and twelfths are kind of tough. Um, so start with the bigger number, 15 doesn't work, 30 doesn't work, 45 doesn't work, 60 works. 60 is the common denominator of 12 and 15. Now I'm going to bring down my whole numbers, okay, and then I'm going to figure out, okay, this was 15 times what is 60? That's times 4, that's times 4. So 4 times 4 is 16, and then over here I have 12 times 5 is 60, so 11 times 5 is 55. Now look again, so I made common denominators, I have my equivalent fractions, I'm ready to go. I'll notice that I can't take away 16 minus 55, so I'm going to borrow, okay? I'm going, to I'm going to borrow from this 9 now. So I'm going to cross off the 9, make it into an 8, and then give that 1 that I took away to the fraction. And then underneath of it, I'm going to write 8, and I'm going to change that 1 and 16 sixtieths into an improper fraction by adding, well, 60 times 1. It's always the same number. It's always times 1. So 60 times 1 is 60, and then plus the 16 is 76. So I took 1 from the 9, gave it to this fraction, made that fraction into an improper fraction, and then pulled that 8 back down and reconnected it. Okay, this is still the same amount as 9 and 16 60ths, but now I have it, so I'm going to be able to subtract. So I'm going to rewrite my minus 3 and 55 60ths. I'm going to look to subtract 76 minus 55. Now you might have to do some, you know, margin, work in the margin to figure this out. Um, it ends up being 21. So let me subtract my whole numbers. 8 minus 3 is 5. And then 76 minus 55 is 21. So that's 21 sixtieths. So Hold on, let me regroup here. Made common denominators, saw that I had to borrow, borrowed from the 9, gave 1 to the 16 sixtieths, turned that into an improper fraction. Then I subtracted my whole numbers, subtracted my fractions. Whew, this is a lot. And then the last thing I have to do is make sure this is in simplest form, and it's actually not. I can divide both of these by 3. Uh, 3 goes into 21 7 times and 3 goes into 60 20 times, and then, of course, it's still 5. So I get 5 and 7 twentieths when I reduce it to simplest form. So this is a great example to show you how crazy this can get, how 
much work there can be involved when you have to borrow versus simple examples where you can just subtract the numerators and you don't have to borrow. They're pretty simple, but then when you have to borrow, that always becomes a little bit hectic. You have to borrow from the whole number, borrow from the whole number. Okay? Just a couple more examples. Now, these last examples all work off of whole numbers minus mixed numbers, whole minus minus mixed numbers, and mixed number minus whole number. These are relatively simple. So here I have 5 minus 2 and 1 third. Now people usually think that this an the answer to this is 3 and 1 third. But that's not true, and I'll draw you a perfect picture. So here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have 5 holes, okay? We're going to take away 2 and 1 third of them. So if I eliminate 2 of them, now I have 3 left over. I still need to eliminate 1 third of one of them. So I'll break 1 into thirds. Eliminate the one-third, and you can see that it's it's not two. I'm sorry, it's not three and one-third left over. It's two and two-thirds left over. And let me show you how you can find that. See it? One, two, and then the two-thirds after I took away the two and one-third. So here's how you can find it mathematically. We're going to change this five into a mixed number. So it's kind of like borrowing, but it's a little bit simpler. I'm going to change this 5 into a mixed number. I'm going to reduce it down to 4 for my whole number. And then the fraction that I give it is going to equal 1. Now, if you think about fractions that equal 1, fractions that equal 1 are like 2 halves, 3 thirds, 4 fourths, 5 fifths. It pretty much goes on forever. 15 fifteenths. Okay, anything over itself actually equals 1. So I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to tack it on to 4. How do I know which one to use? 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 4 fourths, I'm sorry, 2 halves, 3 thirds, 4 fourths, 5 fifths. Which ones do I tack on to this 4? Because altogether it has to equal 5. The answer to that is look at the other fraction. The other fraction is in thirds. So make common denominators by just picking the same number. So 4 and 3 thirds is the same thing as 5, and now I can actually take away my mixed number. So I'm going to do 4 minus 2, that's 2, and then 3 minus 1, that's 2 thirds. 2 and 2 thirds. Okay? I'll show you one more of those because people are always a little confused by this first step. So here I have 8 minus 1 and 5 sevenths. So again, I'm subtracting a mixed number from a whole number. So I'm going to make this 8 into 7, and then I'm going to put 1 behind 7, but I'm going to make it 7, so it's going to be 7 and 7 sevenths. I got that from this. And now I can take away 1 and 5 sevenths. 7 minus 1 is 6. 7 minus 5 is 2, and I keep my denominator so it's 6 and 2 sevenths. See, it's not 7 and 5 sevenths. That's what people think sometimes. It's 6 and 2 sevenths. And then the last example I have to show you is when you have a mixed number and you take away a whole number. Now this is different because here, the only thing I'm subtracting, here's my subtraction symbol, the only thing I'm subtracting is 4. Where here I was subtracting 1 and 5 sevenths. Here, I was subtracting 2 and 1 third. So I'm, I'm not only taking away 2, but I'm taking away the 1 third also. I'm not only taking away the 1, but I'm taking away the 5, one, I'm sorry, the five sevenths too. I'm taking both of them away. But in this example, I'm not taking away anything but 4. So it's real simple. I just do 9 minus 4. Whoops. <laughs> 9 minus 4 is 5. So I'm going to do 9 minus 4 is 5. And then I just keep my one-third. So I'll just show you one example of this real quick in a picture. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here I have nine holes, and then I'll make a third of a hole. There we go. There's my third. I have nine and one-third, and I'm taking away four. Take away, take away, take away, take away. And so I see I only took away four, so now I'm left with one, two, three, four, five, and one third. Okay? This was different as opposed to where I had one, two, three, four, 
5 and I had to take away 2 and 1 third and so I took away 1, 2 and then I have to actually take away 1 third of 1 and that only leaves me the 2 and the 2 thirds. Okay, so if you're just subtracting a whole number, just subtract the whole number. If you're subtracting a mixed number, then make the other whole number into a mixed number. I know it's a lot to remember, but as always, subtraction is harder than addition. So that is subtracting mixed numbers. Have fun.